what we're going to do through this channel is show you things that you can do that are not going to cost you the earth, that are not going to cost you a fortune. Okay, there'll be things that cost money, but there'll be excellent value for money. Hi, I'm Dizzy. And I'm Bex. And this is De Niro, who is in the shop because he really wants this biscuit. We have just done Fort William Park Run. And now we're going over the sea to Skye to visit our friends Willie and Sarah, who are living the Sky life. But first of all, they've asked us to do a little bit of shopping. And now De Niro gets his biscuit! So we headed off to do some shopping and buy the things on Willie and Sarah's list. Now I was surprised to see candles and incense on that list. It turned out I was looking at the wrong list. Well, at least we'll be able to get all the essentials in one department. Living in an idyllic setting on a beautiful island is all well and good, but you're far too far from the nearest Aldi's. I suppose the Booze Island Aldi's is like a duty fee shop for the people of Skye. It's where you go to get booze that's much cheaper than it is at home before you go back over the sea to your house. And it was also a chance to stock up on some dog biscuits for De Niro. This poor box looked horrified that we almost forgot the dog biscuits. So it's time to introduce you to the last member of our travelling party. This is Mabel, who I know desperately needs a wash. But Mabel takes us on all of our adventures, saving an absolute fortune on staying in hotels because you can park it anywhere and nobody knows it's a camper. The only difficulty we have with De Niro and the van is obviously when we're driving he can't be rattling about in the back so we have to put his harness on him and now he sees the harness he's got wise to it and he tries to hide. There is also another reason why we have to put a harness on him. The reason we have him in his harness is if not we get this. He's back looking for a biscuit. This is actually about the fourth take of this video, so uh, he's not getting any more biscuits because all he does is make a mess and I've just hoofed. And you've only just left Port William when the first oohs and ahs inspired by the scenery start to be heard. It really is quite pretty when you get up here and it only gets better the further north you go. Right, and the first stop on our trip from Fort William to the Isle of Skye is Spian Bridge, which isn't very far out. This is a memorial to the commandos that trained here during the Second World War and we weren't actually going to stop, but then we we saw the rainbow so we thought there's a rainbow we have to stop it is an amazing place it's a beautiful day the sun's out the sky is blue scotland in january it's not what you would expect but if you're lucky it's very much what you get looking at it today you can't imagine how grim the weather would have been when these guys were doing their thing and then from that they went off to fight brave men the commandos looking out at the mountains where they learnt their skills where they've honed their craft and that's the Commando Memorial. It is well worth a little visit if you're passing. There's not much to see here, but the statue's nice, and if the weather's good, it's great. So now we're going to go and get De Niro out the van, take him for a wee walk before we head on to the next part of our journey. Some people really seem to overthink travelling with a dog. We've had De Niro for a few months now, and almost immediately he got the hang of living in the back of the van. So when we're away camping, the dog comes with us and travels in the back of the van. Admittedly, overnight stops can be interesting, because when you get a greyhound to tell you to keep it on its lead because there's a flight risk, and you tell you about its special diet, and you tell you about its eyesight and its hearing and its speed, what they don't tell you about is truly, truly horrendous flatulence. But we do love him, so we'll let him off with his weapons grade trumps, and we'll always remember to leave a window open when we're in the van. Once you get north of Fort William, the scenery really starts to change. You're in the proper highlands, the land, the lochs and the mountains and the wilderness. There's miles and miles of nothing, with little communities scattered about here and there, but nothing really very big. There's not, not a decent sized town until you get to Kyle of the Calche, which is just before you cross the bridge to Sky. There are a few ways to get from Fort William to Kyle of the Calche and then onto Sky. You can get the train from Fort William to Kyle, that's a lovely railway journey. You can drive down the A87 or you can cycle if you're of the, the cycling mentality. There's also a good bus network up here and the bus will get you all the way from Fort William into Portree on Sky and all points in between. If you are going by train from Fort William to Kyle, make sure you get your ticket well in advance because prices do vary quite a lot. Okay, so we're just outside Spian Bridge. We're heading toward, we're heading towards Inverness but we're going to turn off before we get there. And this is the view that you're presented with. This really is perfect. I mean, it was raining and horrible and miserable this morning when we did the park run and now it's just amazing. I mean, it's just a beautiful day. I don't even filmed in the rain yet which in Scotland quite unusual. If you go down to the woods today... Oops, is that a copyright thing, is it? That song? Don't know. Anyway, 
Here we go, another woods, another stop. And this, on the road to Skye, is Glengarry. I love the way the sun is just peeking through the clouds there. That is really pretty. I said it before, and I'll no doubt say it again a lot. It's quite a pretty place. Although that is a big dark cloud, so the weather may well change quite quickly. As you head down the road towards Kyle of the Kalsh, through the Kintail Peninsula, one of the things that you pass that everybody instantly recognises is Aelin Donan Castle. It must be about the most iconic castle in Scotland with its access bridge and its setting. It's just unbelievable. I mean, it's just, look at the pictures. It's just an absolutely gorgeous thing to see. The castle dates back to the 1300s and it's got a long and fairly bloody history. But what you actually see now doesn't date back anything like that far. It is quite interesting to know that the castle that you see today sitting there looking all ancient and medieval is actually a re fairly recent addition. It was built in the early 1900s based on an original plan and some ruins and some thoughts and apparently on the architect's dream of what it should look like. And Aelin Donan is really the last major landmark that you pass on your way down this road. Next stop, Kyle of the Kalsh and the Sky Bridge. And there it is, the Sky Bridge. Now it wasn't that awfully long ago that the only way to get to Sky was by boat. It made the place isolated and to be honest a lot of the locals liked it that way. The bridge was opened in 1995 and from that moment the island was never quite the same. One of the main things I remember about the Sky Bridge when it opened was the cost of going across it. We watched it on the telly and there was people protesting. It was over £5 to go across this wee bridge. It was only 40 pence to go across the Fourth Road Bridge, which is like twice as long. So the locals were not happy, but uh, people power won in the end. Various concessions were tried to make the bridge more palatable to the locals, but nothing worked. So in the end, the government bought the bridge and abolished the tops. And once you're over the bridge, you're in a different country. Although it's still part of Scotland, it's a very different sort of Scotland. There's a lot of Viking influence here and the way the people work and the way the people live is very different to most areas of the mainland that you might know about. So if you visit Skye, be prepared to see something that is not like anything else you would see anywhere else on the Scottish mainland. We didn't know Wurzel Gumwich had retired to Skye. I think it must be about time for our word of the day. But we don't have time to stand here talking to Scarecrows. We've got a bona fide YouTube celebrity to meet. And here we have our special oh, guest star. It's Jack Spaniels! Oh. Hi Jack! He's not signed a contract. Oops, no contract. He's off this trip. We didn't have a great deal of time to explore. We were way too busy uh, enjoying ourselves, catching up and having a wee drink or two. But when you do get to Skye, it's the most amazing place to visit. It's a great place for people that love the outdoors. And if you love the outdoors, it's also a very cheap place to visit because Scotland has some very enlightened rules about outdoor access. We have a thing up here called the Scottish Outdoor Access Code, which says you're allowed to enjoy the outdoors. You're allowed to enjoy most of Scotland's land as long as you do it responsibly. So this Outdoor Access Code extends to camping. So you can basically well camp anywhere that's not enclosed, it's not somebody's garden, it's not got livestock, etc. There are various rules, but they're all just common sense. So take your rubbish home. Don't don't leave a mess, don't annoy anybody and leave the place as you found it and you can go pretty much anywhere on Sky and have views like this to greet you when you get out of your tent in the morning. It really is a marvellous, marvellous place. And that big rocky spire that you're looking at just now is actually the Old Man of Store, which is worth a look. Now we didn't get there this trip so we're really grateful to Willie from Living the Sky Life for sorting us out with drone footage of this and various other attractions around the island. Now we will be back to get these for ourselves but in the meantime enjoy Willie's footage. It goes without saying, if you are while camping on Sky, let somebody know where you're going because you could be a long way from the nearest help and phone signals up here are not as guaranteed as they might be when you're back home. So uh, please be careful, please be aware of your surroundings, let somebody know exactly where you are. And if you want to find out more about life in this amazing part of the world, then check out Living the Sky Life on YouTube. We'll link to it at the end of this episode. Now we are aware that this is Scotland on a shoestring and we were going to show you all the cool things that you could do on Sky for nothing the next day. The plan was, when we left uh, Willie and Sarah and Jack in Skye, was to do some filming on the way home and get some nice pretty pictures for you nice people and show you what the island of Skye and the road look like. Unfortunately, in Scotland the weather can change quite quickly, so although it was beautiful and sunny when we were there on the first day, when I woke up on the morning of the second day it was, well, dreech, grey, horrible, raining and blowing a hoolie. A hooli is uh, a lot of wind, two words in one day today. So we uh, weren't brave enough to get out of the van to do any filming or take any photographs because we would have been blown off our feet. But with Scotland being Scotland, there's always at least one thing you absolutely have to stop for. And there's one thing that we saw on the way down the road that we thought, right, we're going to stop and we're going to film this. Well, by we, I mean me. Bex and De Niro stayed in the van while I went out to have a look at the waterfall at the top end of Glencoe. Now, it rains a lot in Scotland, so we've seen this waterfall looking pretty good, but we've never seen it look quite this powerful, quite this majestic. 
realistic, it was well worth the stop and a great little memory to end our trip. So we do hope you've enjoyed this video and don't worry, we will be going back to Sky for a proper shoestring guide in the very near future to see what you can do on this lovely island for not an awful lot of money. So with that, thank you very much for watching and please like and subscribe and all that gubbins and we'll see you again soon.